Thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. When you sign up with the link in the description, you'll also get free access to my streaming service, Nebula. In August 2020, something happened that has never happened before. The US government threatened to ban an app. President Trump signed an executive order making it illegal for US companies to conduct transactions with ByteDance, the Chinese owner of TikTok, beginning September 20th, unless it was sold to an American buyer. Unlike the Huawei ban one year earlier, which also invoked the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, this was a forced transfer and involved something far more tangible, something millions of Americans use every day. And so began, on August 6th, an unprecedented 45-day race to solicit offers, draft agreements, negotiate terms, seek approval, and finalize a deal the likes of which have never been attempted before. Which companies would the Trump administration approve? How would it affect the presidential election? Did ByteDance have any legal recourse? How would a ban logistically work? And what exactly would a buyer of TikTok receive? The answers to all these questions were fuzzy. It would seem the app would be split in three. One version for the Chinese market, as now, one for select countries like the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and a third regular TikTok for the rest of the non-Chinese world. Unsure of whether a deal would be made, TikTok engineers worked day and night preparing to completely disconnect from one of its largest markets at the last second. On top of this, ByteDance sued the government in a last-ditch attempt to reverse, or at least delay, the ban. Adding to the panic was the confusion around dates. Trump continued mentioning September 15th, despite already signing an order for the 20th. And on August 14th, the president signed a second executive order, this time ordering ByteDance to destroy all US user data by November 12th. American employees of TikTok even wondered if they would still be legally allowed to receive their salaries, before a clarification was made. Despite all these questions and complications, it actually did seem as though a deal might be reached. Mostly because its hands were tied. With nearly zero negotiating leverage and a fast ticking clock, ByteDance might as well cash out on its inevitable way out of the country. But, like a well-designed roller coaster, there have been alternating up and down periods where a sale seemed either absolutely certain or utterly impossible. Sell, but the question was, to who? The list of possible buyers was relatively short because, A, even with a Trump ban fire sale discount, it would surely be one of the biggest tech acquisitions in history, likely more expensive than Facebook paid for WhatsApp or Microsoft for LinkedIn. And B, the otherwise likely contenders like Google and Amazon are already under historic levels of antitrust scrutiny, a deal this high profile would not help make their case. At first, it seemed Microsoft and Walmart in a joint offer would take on that unenviable challenge. Although Walmart sounds like a bizarre match, there are several reasons why it might make sense. In China, influencers, or key opinion leaders as they're known there, use the app to sell everything from books to clothes to makeup, the modern version of as seen on TV infomercials. Imagine Brad Pitt casually live streaming about a product he likes, a mix of entertainment and advertising. Chinese social commerce as a whole is a $168 billion a year industry, and if Walmart could replicate this phenomenon in the American market, it might be an effective way of competing with Amazon, while also positioning its brand as younger and more relatable. Together, the two companies made a strong pair. Microsoft could credibly handle the technology, while Walmart provided the business model. The former even made a nod to Trump's request that the US government benefit financially from the deal by vaguely committing to economic contributions. The deal was said to be valued at around 20 to 30 billion dollars and appeared imminent. TikTok's newly hired American CEO even resigned around that time, which analysts interpreted as a sign an agreement had been reached without him. But things took a different turn. With everyone focused on the specifics of a potential deal, no one paid much thought to whether China would approve. A full transfer of TikTok to a US company would not only damage its global influence, but also, and more importantly, set a precedent that Chinese companies could simply be forced to sell on command. And so, for the first and only time since 2008, China's Ministry of Commerce and Science and Technology updated their lists of restricted technology exports. 
The new items included, quote, personalized information recommendation service technology based on data analysis, and artificial intelligence interactive interfaces, both plenty vague enough to be applied selectively. What this means is that ByteDance would need to request approval for the sale from provincial authorities up to 45 days in advance. If it didn't face an impossible task before this change, it certainly did then. It would now have to satisfy a buyer, the Trump administration, and China simultaneously in order to secure a deal. To highlight just how Sisyphean this task was, its CEO Zhang Yiming was simultaneously called a traitor in China and a spy in America. Not unsurprisingly, Microsoft announced its offer had been rejected, and soon after, Oracle confirmed it had reached a deal with ByteDance. Although it specializes in enterprise, not consumer technology, its founder Larry Ellison helped fundraise for Trump earlier this year. The company's current CEO was also on the president's 2016 transition team. The proposal, submitted to the Trump administration and eventually to authorities in China, would have Oracle become the trusted technology provider of a newly formed TikTok Global, which it and also Walmart could hold a combined 20% stake in. The new company would be headquartered in the US, have an American board of directors, and hire thousands of new US employees. The app's data and source code would be stored, monitored, and reviewed by Oracle in the US, while ByteDance would remain in control of the algorithm. To be absolutely clear, this is a deal, not a sale. By maintaining control of the algorithm and engineers in the PRC, very few of the original national security concerns would be addressed. In essence, Oracle would be paid to certify the security of TikTok, making it more like a glorified American inspector or custodian than an owner. The deadline for the original order was extended by one week, to Sunday, September 27th. But whether or not this proposal is approved, in some ways the outcome doesn't really matter. The precedent has already been set. As tensions between the US and China show no signs of improving, TikTok may soon consider itself one of the lucky ones. If 2020 has been a bit overwhelming, CuriosityStream is here to distract you with hours and hours of entertaining documentaries. And now, thanks to CuriosityStream, when you sign up you'll also get access to my streaming service, Nebula. Nebula is a service made by creators for creators, where we can experiment with new projects and topics without fear of the algorithm, and free from annoying ads. You can watch videos before they're released on YouTube, in addition to entirely exclusive originals, like the YouTuber game show Money, hosted by Tom Scott. So, for less than 15 bucks a year, you'll get access to thousands of high-quality documentaries and Nebula, all while helping your favorite creators do new and exciting things. Sign up today with the link in the description.